the 4th of July. We're gonna have a brisket. I think it's gonna rain. Maybe it's not. It is. What time does that say? 7.10. We're supposed to eat at 6 o'clock. I haven't even turned on the smoker. I'm gonna show you. We will eat at 6 o'clock. We will eat a tender brisket. It'll be smoked from here to high heaven. It's gonna be done on this smoker right here. Just a char grill from Home Depot like five years ago. Stick burner. We're not using a pellet grill or anything. I'm gonna show you how to knock this out. So I'm filming this a little out of order. The first thing I did was trim and season the brisket. I did that last night. Oh, I got a kid joining me over there. But what I'm gonna show you right now is you need to get your fire going. So one thing to do is when you're using a stick burner, if you're a purist, you're only gonna use wood, be it post oak, live oak, whatever it may be. I'm gonna use a little bit of charcoal. It's gonna offer uh, a consistent burn. You don't really need to you know, worry if like, uh, if you have a couple of pieces of wood on there in which I'll show you, you're gonna get a lot of smoke out of it. Charcoal, you can add just a consistent, a little more even burn rather than getting a hot piece of wood that's not seasoned properly. Um, or it's too dry, it's too old, it's wet, it's gonna to create too much smoke. Excuse me. Charcoal is gonna help out a lot with that. So I use one of these chimneys right here, fill it with charcoal. You're gonna put a piece of paper I tear off a piece of this, just kind of wrap it around. So as, as you use charcoal, you just tear down the paper. You're gonna stick it in the bottom right here, light it, and then give it about 20 minutes. It's gonna be ready. Dad. We're at 713. Dad. Okay, so I just lit the bottom. I just tore off these pieces with the bottom, and now we're going. I just use a little torch. Okay, let's check on our smoke or our charcoal. Looks good. It's getting hot. It's gonna be ready here in about eight minutes. Next thing we need to think about the meat. We'll, we'll I'll show you that here in a minute. Fire is kind of a big deal right now. <clears throat> so clean this out. Let's have it nice and clean. You need some good airflow to come under this wood. It's not ideal to set it down on that difficult to get air underneath the wood this door is gonna allow airflow through there you can see it up through the smoker I just moved this you probably didn't notice I don't care if you did or didn't but I moved this to where I was on the other side of that well house and airflow would be difficult well if you can see you kind of see this grass is moving a little bit leaves are moving a little bit our wind is traveling up, up this hill, right at this firebox. So you're gonna adjust it. If you're having flare ups, if it's too hot, your smoker's getting too hot, you can adjust this door, leave it closed or whatever, but you can, well, mine's rusted shut. You adjust this. If it's getting too hot and you need it to cool down, you're obviously gonna close off the airflow. I leave mine I mean, it's rusted like that. I just leave it like that. And if I'm still not getting enough airflow, you can pop it open a little bit. Okay, so charcoal looks good. That's gonna help us light, um, light the wood. Next thing we need to do is go get wood. I leave wood um, year round. I'm not Aaron Franklin. I don't know how to I mean, you can, you can hold a piece of chopped wood, chopped firewood, and you can tell if it's wet or if it's dry based on the weight and the size. If it just feels light, it might be overly dried, overly seasoned. I think Franklin likes to have his, I don't know, 12 or 18 months old, something like that. This is my pile. Okay, so you can tell it's kind of aged. Also came off two different trees. Okay, so we're gonna get us a piece. This is live oak. 
and it is just as hard as the day is long but we're gonna split them there you go careful your handle right here there we go oh got a piece right here that fell on the grass that's not good Did you? All right. Let's go grab some wood real quick. All right, so let's talk about your meat. Okay, so this is a 10 and a half pound prime brisket. All I did was season it with these two things. Pow. Those two right there. That's it. That's all that is on there. It does not take more. If you think it takes more, watch an Aaron Franklin video. Okay. Now, next thing you want to think about is trimming it. Okay. So I trimmed it some right there and I trimmed off kind of a tail end right there. So why did I do that? You're trimming off excess pieces that will either hinder the flow of smoke over the meat or if it's just an enormous piece of fat like up on the point right there, it was a huge hard piece of fat. It's not, that, that's not going to necessarily improve the flavor and it is gonna slow down the cooking. So, this was a 10 pound, five ounce brisket, and it's just under 10 pounds now. So I didn't trim off a whole lot. If you have a kind of a time crunch like I'm on, you know, you need it, you're gonna eat inside of 10 hours. Don't buy a 15 pound brisket. You are not gonna eat in 10 hours. It's not gonna happen. This one's a little bit smaller, 10 pounds. It is prime. I got it at HEB here in, uh, I'm in Texas, Bernie specifically, uh, Prime, it went for $45, right around there, maybe it's $4.59 a pound. Um, yeah, so let's think about uh, smoke replacement, where you are, all that. Let me show you something. Okay, here's my meat. Here's a window. There's my smoker, okay? If I need anything, I'm gonna leave this window cracked and have all my stuff laid out right on top of this freezer. It's a freezer right here. If I need anything, I can easily access it. I'm not walking inside. It's not gonna take me two minutes to go get all this stuff. It's all right there. I can see the fire or I can see the smoke. You can see the smoke trail going out right there out of the stack. Looks great. It's easy to monitor. You're inside. Um, another thing to think about is how you're gonna monitor uh, temperature and everything. So I just use a meat gauge and um, I've been doing it long enough that I know that um, after I go through my third firebox refill, right? So I'm putting in more uh, wood or maybe add a little bit more charcoal. I know that the meat internally in the flat of the brisket is 155 degrees. That's your stall. Your stall is where the meat is kind of getting to uh, a midpoint in temperature and it's difficult to get it past the stall. So once you get it past the stall, which you do with firebox management, temperature management, keeping the smoker at 250, maybe push it to 275 or 300. Um, I know that's gonna ruffle feathers, but it works, still turns out a good brisket, maybe not a competition brisket, but it turns out a good one. And um, what you can do at the 155 mark at the stall is wrap it. I wrap it in butcher paper. First time I ever did it was in foil and it worked really well. But if you wanna shift from fifth to sixth gear, wrap it in butcher paper, you're gonna to continue to get additional smoke. It's gonna insulate the meat and uh, it's gonna continue to get it to your target temperature. Your target temperature in the brisket, when you pull it, is 203 degrees. Not 204, not 201, it's 203 specifically. All right, let's go check the temperature of the smoker. The temperature of the meat before it goes on the grill. Set it out on the counter for a few hours, at least I would say. You wanna do that at least. You don't wanna set a cold piece of meat, this, 
on a hot grill. This is 200 and, well, it's, we're climbing. We're now up to 250. You don't want to put a 34 degree piece of meat on the inside of here. Being the outside is cooking faster than the inside. Duh, we know that. Okay, but if the internal temperature is 34 and the internal or the outside temperature is over 200, you're gonna have an incredibly uneven cook and you're gonna have something overcooked on the outside. So what I do is I oftentimes have been, I've left it out overnight just on the kitchen counter wrapped. Check the internal temperature and it's 55. You're gonna eliminate, I don't know, an hour and a half or two hours off your cook time by leaving it. Hey, what? You need shoes on? Oh my goodness, I know. What? Yes. So you're okay. So you can cut your cooking time down by just leaving it on the counter. And it's not cooking it, it's just bringing it to more of a room temperature. So if this thing is 32 to 34 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, whatever that is, two degrees Celsius, that right? You're not cooking it when you put it on a grill. You're bringing it up to temperature and it's starting to cook when it's like in the 80s and 90s, maybe 90s. So, um, yeah, leave it on the counter. Let it warm up. All right, let's put it on the grill. All right, it's on there. See our fire? This part right here. This is your flat. You move up to your point. You want your flat facing the fire. You want the smoke to roll evenly over the top. As this is thicker, if it was on the other end, the smoke wouldn't roll evenly over it. All right, that's the magic. Woo, baby. Okay, it is, you see that? 825. I don't know what time I put this on. I just added a small, okay, a small piece of wood to it. Here's our fire. We're cooking. Looks good. Temperature 250. That's the proper amount of smoke. Looks good. Okay. Got a crying kid, that happens. Temperature, 275 is starting to creep up. You can do one of two things. You can close this off a little bit, which I'm not gonna do. Or you can slow down the air intake, just like that. We'll come back and check it. And uh, you know, 250 really is kind of where I wanna be. Hey. What are you doing? Okay. We're still at 300. This door is closed. I want it to cool down a little bit. So with the plastic candle that will easily melt, this, this isn't hot by the way. Ah! Just kidding. With the plastic or with this, your exhaust, your chimney, you're just gonna close it off a little bit. If the exhaust can't come out as fast as it needs to, it in turn, We'll slow down, this will fill up with a little bit more smoke. It'll slow down the ability for the wood to burn. In turn, lowering this temperature. So, sorry if it's windy. Close this door first. Make sure everything's closed. If your temperature is still climbing or it's just too high, then work on closing that chimney slightly. Slightly. Okay, it's been a few minutes since we closed that up a little bit. We're sitting pretty steady, 250. It's perfect. Don't open this. If you're looking, you ain't cooking. Just continue to monitor your fire through here. She looks good. You can see some flames through there. That's what we want. All right, don't touch it. Leave it alone. There's our smoker, pink butcher paper. Now we need to wrap this. What you need to remember is here is your point, here is your flat. You wanna to continue to have your flat. I know it's wrapped, but it does matter. Continue to have your flat and your fat cap. Fat cap up, flat towards the fire. So let's remember that. Get up. Spread this a little bit. Grab these two oven mitts, kinda of come inside a little bit. 
There we go. I'm gonna drag this on. There. Center it a little bit, okay? Fat cap, you're not gonna rotate this, so the fat cap will still stay up. We're gonna wrap it. Remember, it's hot. your kid clean up a mess. Touch, um. <laughs> Tuck this in because you don't want anything leaking out. Okay? Flat, fat cap. There you go. Wrap. The benefit of wrapping is you're going to continue this wrap will continue to allow smoke into the meat while it smokes. So even though it's cooking, if you use foil, smoke can't penetrate foil, obviously. This paper is designed in such a way that uh, it allows smoke in there. I normally have a type of like a tape that I use. I'm just gonna kind of seal it up like this. Hot, 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 hot. Thermometer. Here's your thermometer. You're gonna put that in. Um, some people say the point. Some people say the flat. Uh, I put it in the flat because if it's in the point, the point cooks a little bit slower. If your point is 205 degrees, your flat is gonna be considerably higher. So also use this to kind of pin the butcher paper and keep it on there. All right, so we are now, let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, six hours into our smoke. That's plenty of smoke. Now it is wrapped. Let's check the temperature. It's sitting at 180. We're going to move this into the oven. It's got plenty of smoke. Six hours is plenty long enough. Just keep it wrapped just like this. Transport it. We're going to put it in a 275 degree oven. Okay, we pulled it out 203 degrees. It is, we have a clock here. Do you see that 613? I think we started at 8. I'll verify all of the right time right there. Um, it's been resting for an hour. So we're going to slice it. It's really loud with all these people here. So um, I'm just gonna get someone to record video of it slicing, but uh, feels tender. I'm gonna slice it and we're at 172 degrees. So it's cooled about 30 degrees. There you go. It's the first one I've done in over two years. Really? Mm -hmm. Moist. Looks good, yeah. A little bit of burnt ends right there. It's still really hot to be slicing, but uh, pull it apart. Oh yeah, it pulls right apart. Give the mic shot. Is this yours? No, take whatever you want. 